The short answer is hypothetically. Obviously, any work could be adapted to another form well if it's in the right hands. Some of cinema's greatest works are adaptations, but that doesn't make them any less films, however. How many times have you heard someone say, the book's better than the movie? I hate that saying. It's so misguided. It's completely apples and oranges. Movies are not books and books are not movies. There's plenty you can do with one that simply cannot be achieved in the other. The same idea applies to films and video games. Adapting one to film is not as simple as have actors act out the cutscenes or whatever. I think a lot of people missed the point of what I meant by adaptation in my previous video. I got a lot of responses saying the Mother games would be great animated films, with many pointing to Studio Ghibli to be great people to put in the hands of. While those claims aren't necessarily untrue, my cynicism over an Earthbound movie has never had to do with it on a stylistic level. Of course the hypothetical film could look great, that was never my concern. There's already plenty of media that makes it very clear what things should look like, and its simplicity even allows for greater detail and diversion from just a one-to-one -one adaptation in my opinion. I even think that's one of the lesser concerns if it was being adapted to live action. But while style is an important part to filmmaking, it's far from the only element to be thinking about when making one. You have to consider things like Earthbound's structure. Yeah, the game has plenty of text and dialogue, but there are long stretches where you're just walking from one place to another, and the main characters virtually never speak for the most part. With a story this long, you can't afford to have a silent protagonist. In a game, sometimes it's implied what a silent character is saying. Or you have dialogue options or something, so it can go more or less unacknowledged and not suck you out of the experience. But with a film? With a film, you can't do that anymore. Especially one as emotionally complex as Earthbound. Back in the silent days, comedy films were taken much more seriously as art, and even seen as high filmmaking. A lot of dramas around this time tended to lack a lot of action outside of the actor's gesture and the occasional action scene, and had to make up for this in spectacle. They could still have good, even great stories, but a lot of audiences and critics ended up seeing them as more or less filmed plays rather than movies. Straight dramas would also result in a lot of inner titles. These things. I know this probably seems like one can of worms after another, but this is important to my point, so bear with me. Inner titles were seen by many filmmakers as uncinematic, and basically as a way to cheat out of having to convey things visually, which film, a visual medium, is all about. This is where comedy excelled. Many of the top comedy filmmakers took every step they could to make films with as few inner titles as possible, to make room for as much of the story to be told without text as they could. This is where the idea of pure cinema comes from. The drawback to this approach, however, was that these films generally ended up having to settle for really simple stories for audience understandability, so they too had to make up for things in spectacle. That doesn't mean they weren't well written or lacked emotionality, it just meant that the overall stories of most of these films weren't usually more complex than a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Nothing wrong with simplicity, that's just how the minimal inner titles compromise worked out. My point being that in a story as long as Earthbound's, you have to have quite a bit of dialogue to communicate it faithfully, but the main characters who would be at the center of this whole thing, more or less, don't talk. Beyond that, they have pretty surface level character traits, and that's not a critique of Earthbound, in fact it was a purposeful design choice. Ness mostly not speaking isn't because a toy didn't feel like writing more dialogue, it's because he's a self-insert role more or less. The game actively tries to dissuade the player from picking the default naming option, saying you don't care if you pick them. I mean, have you ever thought about why his name's Ness? It's the first don't care option, and as many have pointed out, an anagram for SNES. Because when you pick those options, you're at least partially saying to yourself, he is a video game character. Just an extension of the console, more or less. The toy wants you to put names that resonate with you in these boxes, and was something he took a step further in trying to facilitate in Mother 3, with the character descriptions clearly attempting to remind the player of someone they know. In an Earthbound movie, Ness has to speak, and while this of course is not inherently a bad thing, as we've spent the whole time discussing, artistic mediums are different, and thus, changes have to be made. It's one of the clearest examples of the dangers in attempting to do this. Ness is a character that's existed for nearly 30 years already, so fans already have their own understandings of who this character is, and we have to take into account that Earthbound is his lone canonical appearance. He's not a character like Mario or Sonic, where over the course of literally hundreds of games his character has been defined and seen several reinterpretations to refine his role. Because unlike Ness, those characters weren't made to be self-inserts, they were created as characters in a much more traditional sense. Again, not an inherent evil per se, but a very clear mark of where differences start. Going back to Mario and Sonic, it's why you see these characters as separate entities from these characters. 
this guy would never wear a collared shirt. And I just think with how long Ness has been established as a cookie cutter character for players to project themselves into, suddenly giving him very clear cut traits is dangerous territory and leaving his character development more implied in the game gave the developers the best of both worlds in this respect. A whole other issue to figure out is the story content itself. The facts are, if Earthbound was a movie, there'd be a lot of cuts made. This would be a movie based on a game that a lot of normies haven't heard of, is animated, and lots of its production would likely be done in close arms with Nintendo. This is getting marketed as a kid's movie. And the biggest film markets are China and the United States, you have to remember. This means no Happy Happiest Cult, no Gaius being beaten by prayer, and tons of other stuff is getting cut out. Even if hypothetically content wasn't an issue and everything would be acceptable, this is a long game, so cuts are being made regardless. And with the amount of samples in this game soundtrack, there is no way you'd be hearing music from the game in it. All of this not even mentioning the inevitable minionsization of Mr. Saturn. God, please, no. Something else to consider as well is the role of narration. Sure, you could abridge a bunch of story by having a narrator just go, and then they found the pink cloud, but at that point you're not really adapting it or converting it to film. It could help impose more traditional structure, but it ends up coming across as lazy a bunch of the time. Stuff like that should only be used when absolutely necessary. I also have seen some people suggest adapting the novels, but that, again, is my point, that I'm not sure these games could ever be faithfully adapted to film, not to mention the novels are also not at all like the games in the first place. That statement, however, has given way to a lot of, but it could work as a TV show responses, and honestly, I agree, to an extent. Between the two, a television series is certainly the better option, and dare I say, actually a good choice if this story were to be adapted? I stand with a lot of you though that ideally it would be the best as an animated series. No cynicism there either, an Earthbound television series in the right hands could absolutely work, at least as well as it's able. Also saw a lot of people saying it'd work if the writers just based it on the novels, but at that point it's not really an adaptation of the games, it's one of the novels. Which is fine, but is very different from a straight game adaptation. The thing is that the issue of adapting one form to another in this case really has a lot less to do with the size of the story and the pre-established characters though than you'd think. You have to understand that Itoi didn't make the Mother series into a video game trilogy just because he couldn't figure out how to make them into books or movies or whatever. He even had the opportunity to do so when Mother 3 was initially cancelled according to some sources. Point being, he made them as video games because they were meant to be experienced as video games, with the cinematic elements being there just to elevate the story. You can't translate the feeling you get when all of your attacks stop working during the Gigas fight, or Lucas refusing to attack during the final boss of Mother 3, to any other form faithfully, really. You know how earlier I mentioned pure cinema? That idea of telling the story purely through its visuals, nothing but the moving pictures? Well, moments like this in games, where the gameplay itself is how you experience the story, that's pure video gaming, in my view. Nowadays, a lot of games are attempting to be movies with their cutscenes, and to be honest, it started a long time ago. Again, similar to film, more and more dialogue became necessary as stories became more and more complex. Nothing wrong with that, but the more precise you want to be, the more limits you impose on yourself in this way. Also, I'm not saying adaptations should never be made. Hell, I even prefer some to their source material, but something is inherently lost in that process. This practice, though, still can yield incredible works of art. I just personally feel Earthbound stands a lot to lose. Part of the reason I think video game adaptations like Sonic, when they try, Mario, when they try, and The Last of Us fare so well boils down to two main reasons. One, genre, and two, source material. For genre, Mario and Sonic are primarily platformers with very simple plots and characters, and thus, outside of aesthetics, have a lot less to remain faithful to, giving the creators a lot more freedom in this regard. RPGs, however, have lots of intricate lore, characters, and mechanics that fans want to see acknowledged and included in adaptations, which oftentimes can't even be achieved with an extended miniseries. There's the theoretical outlook, where you have as many episodes and seasons needed, tons of time, and a big enough budget to fully realize the story, but this is real life, where Earthbound would never get that. On the other hand, you have game-turned shows like The Last of Us, which has been very well received. Now while the show does take certain elements in new directions and explores new things, in the macro narrative, it's pretty faithful. But consider this. The Last of Us game is pretty much already a movie. The cutscenes are movies, the credits even call them movies. This does not downplay the original work done, but it has a much greater groundwork that's ripe to be adapted. 
With Earthbound story structure, you'd end up with a movie that's just some characters going to one place after another, the audience knowing how many there are the whole time, so they'd just be counting down throughout. And movies and shows where you're just watching people go from place to place to get a piece of a whole is boring, case in point. In a game, you can do that, a book too, but in cinema, it's just not interesting. Unless there's a counter to the protagonist, and not an omniscient one like Gygus, one like the masked man from Mother 3, making the adventure a race. You either have a race for the pieces or whole of something, or a sort of a mystery structure where one clue leads the characters to the next. Things just do need to be a bit more linear in film, unless you're looking to do something artsier, which with Earthbound Story, you do not have the time to do. If you were to take the race approach, the task becomes creating a character to race the Chosen Four, and the only reason I frame this as something not good is because historically when characters emerge as a remedy for structure, it usually results in some really lame OCs. You could make it Porky, but I think this would spoil his final unveiling as a truly evil character. Not to mention the role of the Sanctuary locations would have to be completely reconfigured, seeing as with this approach, the opposition would have to beat him to getting some of them, or else there's no drama, and you have to save Gygus for the ending, which, by the way, would be in huge danger of becoming super corny instead of tear-jerking. It'd become just another, lend me your power scene, instead of something really standout and meaningful that serves a larger purpose for the series' deeper thematic throughline. Interestingly, I think the quasi-mystery structure would be a better pick here, though it still would maintain many of the same obstacles the other one poses. With the mystery approach, it could be something like each sanctuary location gives Ness a hint as to where the next one is, like, you must seek the light in the darkness of the cold snow, or whatever. It still warned a direct opposing force for them to race against, but at least it conceals some of the mystique of the locations. The need for an intruding opponent like this is because there needs to be some sort of rush to fix things, otherwise you lose that sense of urgency that the world is going to end if this quest isn't completed. In a game, time can be manipulated however the designers want it to, and likewise in Earthbound, the progression of time is really up in the air in terms of how long the journey actually is. In a movie, this can be done to an extent, but there are limitations. In a game's passage of time, you don't need to worry about things like age. Same thing with some shows, too. But in a movie, there's a very specific amount of time allotted for things to be wrapped up by. There's no time to just lounge around. Things always need to be happening. And there are even limits to the audience's suspension of disbelief in regards to timeliness in TV shows. This is my point. You can impose all these sorts of changes in order to make Earthbound work as a movie, but the more you do these things to force that outcome, the more it ceases to be Earthbound. Which again, I think is a consequence of the style of game it is, despite it having cinematic elements. But but Mother One can work as a movie. You just don't get it, do you, person who's not here to defend themselves? Mother 1 as an adaptation would face practically all the same problems a Mother 2 one would. What I'd say it has going for it, however, is it's the one least Mother fans care about, therefore liberties taken with it would probably be largely forgiven as long as they hit the major story beats. And who knows, maybe an Earthbound 1 would be too. You may have noticed many of the things I pointed to as likely being changed in a film adaptation of Earthbound are things that are already present in Mother 3. And like many of you, I agree that of the trilogy, it's the one most fit to be adapted for film. Or at least it's the one that transitioned the smoothest. Mother 3's pacing is much more defined, as well as its main characters, and the game's comparative linearity really makes it a good fit for a cinematic adaptation, particularly a series. Though there's that whole thing of it being a direct sequel to Earthbound, so you couldn't exactly do it without doing that one too, so we're at a stalemate then. Yes, I know, they all could be adapted, that's not what I'm getting at here, it's that I don't think they'd necessarily make good adaptations. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, and there's a very clear distinction between a good adaptation and a good film. A movie can be good without being faithful to its source material, so I want to be clear I am not saying that an Earthbound movie or show couldn't be good even in its own right, just that it likely wouldn't be the best adaptation. And this has even been witnessed with the same series. It's funny how the possibility of an Earthbound movie actually became much more possible so shortly after my first video on this topic, and was even my first video essay. And revisiting the subject now, almost a year later, I have to say, my thoughts have not really changed on the matter. If you're looking for an Earthbound inspired movie, you could definitely get one, and plenty of ones already exist that inspired Earthbound. But if you want a faithful Earthbound adaptation, well...
serious? 